Hello everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome to Mondays with Mr. Happy, aka Mr. Happy Mondays, the weekly Q&A show where you ask me questions and I answer them. Real quick at the bottom of the video, uh, videos for the week, I took it super light this week on videos, um, because I'm just trying to like relax and get as much sleep and as just chill out as much as possible this week while I'm waiting for Final Fantasy 15. because when Final Fantasy 15 launches, we're going to be live for like at least 18 hours straight. And I need all the energy I can collect. Um, for that reason, the Monday that this Monday's with Mr. Happy is being posted, I am actually not going to be live until 1 p.m. And I'm just doing count up cast, and then I'm going back to sleep for a few more hours. And then I'm going to start my stream at between like 7 to 7.30 p.m. PST. And the game goes live at 9 p.m. PST, so we're going to like hype it up a little bit. Um, with that sort of hype up thing that we're doing... Um, I have a few rules that I'm going to set in place for my Final Fantasy 15 stream. For one, sub mode is going to be on the entire time. Main reason for that is um, people who are not subs potentially posting spoilers in the chat. I'm not just worried about that for me. I can deal with a spoiler here and there, although I've managed to stay like completely spoiler free for Final Fantasy 15 so far. Um, but for other people watching that are a little bit more bothered or may not watch just because they're afraid of that, I want to eliminate that. Now, it doesn't eliminate it. Someone could still easily sub and then spoil, but they had to spend $5 to do it, and it's a much more moderatable thing. As soon as we see it, they're banned. We don't have to worry about hundreds of people doing that all at the same time. Um, and on top of that, we're going to have a ton of giveaways because I'm also participating in something called Gaming Tuesday, which is basically going to be a giant charity event that Tuesday for the Save the Children Foundation. Those of you who have been around for the past several years know that the Save the Children Foundation helped Mel and I really get this channel off the ground. So we owe a lot to them. And so anytime they're doing an event and I'm invited to it, I always participate. We're going to have goals for uh, for. The charity, we're going to try to raise at least 2000 It's much less than the Extra Life, but because we just did Extra Life at the beginning of the month, I can't really ask for like another five or like a 10 grand goal. So just like a two grand goal. But it's going to be nice. It has its own uh, pop-up notifications for the stream. On top of that, it does have, um, if, if somebody donates at least $50 directly to the Save the Children Foundation through my link, they get a shirt. So there are like some neat little things that are going to happen. And on top of that, they're going to be providing me with a ton of giveaways throughout the day. When I do the giveaways on the stream, I'm going to turn on what is known as emote only mode for Twitch, which means people can only talk in emotes. I'm not kidding, that's actually a thing. And then I disable sub mode so that way people can't spoil it. There are still ways around that, but we've, we're have we doing all we can to eliminate the potential of spoilers in the chat so people can either listen to the stream or watch the stream or participate in the chat with a reasonable expectation that the game won't be ups that their expectations for the game won't be upset. So hopefully those are all things that will be in place. Um, obviously, subbing, cheering, those are still going to be enabled throughout the day because I found out I can't really disable those things and I can't do the whole sub to charity like I did earlier in the month. It's just not a feasible thing for me to do twice in a month. So uh, those are all going to be there but we are going to have the charity as the as the centerfold. We're going to be on the Twitch front page from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. and from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. PST. It's going to be fancy schmancy. Uh, but anyway, now that we've gotten all that information about how the stream is going to go for Final Fantasy 15 this week, I have other things I'll be doing throughout the week. I'm going to be in Vegas Wednesday night through, I think, Saturday morning, I believe, and I'm going to be trying to stream Final Fantasy 15 from Vegas. I'm actually going to test that immediately after this recording, um, or at least sometime tonight. So... It's a busy week, and I'm just hyped for uh, for the craziness that's about to ensue. But anyway, we've all got we've got only a few questions here on the uh, on the Dream Network forums, and then I'm going to take some live questions from the Twitch chat. And you guys know how the show goes from this point on. Let's get to it. All right, first question. Uh, happy Tuesday morning, Mister Happy. Honestly. Wait, Tuesday morning? Oh, you're, you're doing this on Tuesday morning. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Um, by the way, apologies last week. I totally forgot to make a new thread. I'm going to make that new thread as soon as I'm done reading the questions here so I don't forget to do it again. Uh, my non-gaming related question this week. Do you support any sports teams? I don't watch any sports. No traditional sports. No football, no soccer, no well, or football. Um, no baseball, no basketball. I don't watch any of that. I watch esports. I'm like full on nerd status. Like I'll root for TSM. I'll root for, um, I'll root for uh, like Fnatic, whether it's CS:GO or League of Legends, whatever. It doesn't really matter too much to me what esport it is, as long as it's entertaining to watch. Although I definitely follow the League of Legends and Counter Strike scenes more than I follow the other scenes that are out there. So um, no traditional sports teams, but esports teams for sure. 
All right, question number dose. Uh, good day, Mr. Happy. I've got two questions today. Well, then I've got two answers. I'm a pretty new watcher for Mondays with Mr. Happy, and I'll admit I find the random gifts people give you in their questions a tad odd. There has to be a story. Literally, the only story behind that is somebody just one day said, this is my first question, so I'm going to give you a first-time bonus. And I thought it was clever, and I brought it up in the video, and then people have been doing it ever since. That's, that's all it is. It's not really like a fancy story or anything. It's just one person did it one day, and everybody went with it. So that's that's all it is. Um, two, will you be attending Japanese or European Fan Fest? Definitely not the Japanese Fan Festival. And European Fan Festival, like, technically it is still a possibility. I can't say no definitively to European Fan Fest yet. Let me just say the odds of me going are unlikely. I, I would really need to have, like, Square Enix saying, here's your ticket for the show itself, here's your plane ticket, and here's a hotel. I will go if that's the case, if like I'm having expenses paid for, but th that would be my first trip out of the country ever. And it's right in, I'm about to get into the heart of tax season when it comes to that. And as a, you know, independent business owner, tax season's a scary time. I don't like to spend too much money at the beginning of the year because I'm trying to make sure I know what I'm working on with my taxes. So um, it would really need to be covered for it entirely by like Square Enix or, or just somebody going, I don't know. So it's unlikely I'll be at either event. All right, next season. Hey, Haps. So tomorrow, or day after tomorrow for you, is Final Fantasy XV time. I hope you've been able to avoid all the spoilers. We just had the discussion before this, so worked out perfectly. Two questions for you. One, what are you going to eat while playing the game? Any special meal to celebrate? I'm going to buy a cake. Ten years, Happy. Ten years. No, I don't think I'll have any special food. There's some decent health, healthy food choices around where I live. There's also some very not healthy food choices that I'd probably like to indulge in. Um, I'll probably order food the night before. And I'll probably order two meals worth, and I'll make I'll make them slightly more nutritional. Um, what's it called? Uh, slightly more nutritional than uh, I normally would when I'm like ordering out. And then I'll probably have another one that'll store away in the refrigerator that I'll probably eat at like three or four in the morning. And then in the morning itself, like when it hits like 10 a.m., I'll probably order something. But I gotta make sure that what I'm ordering is not like shitty food. Like I don't want to order pizza. I don't want to order burritos or tacos or like it's gotta be like something that is like you know, chicken and vegetables and something that is actually like a health, like a, it's, it's health conscious at the very least. I also probably will have a lot of coffee. I'll probably drink some G fuel. Uh, and then I got a bunch of water that I've gotten the, that, uh, we've got in the fridge. We actually have one of those, like make it your own, uh, carbonated water things. And we add the little flavorings to it. Uh, so they're low cal and pretty well flavored. So it's uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see that I, uh, as long as I stay well hydrated and well nutri nu well nutritioned, that's not the word, um, then I should be okay throughout all of those all of those hours. I'm, I've never had in and out, and I'm not getting in and out. Uh, number two, you can't skip this one. Oh, you can skip this one if you don't know time. Name one skill from each of the jobs that you would like removed or changed. I definitely can't do one of every job. Um, I mean, like some of them that come to mind faint on Dragoon. I know some bards are out there going to be like, no, I use that sometimes rarely. Um, but faint is one that comes to mind. Um, one ill punch has its place, but if I had to get rid of a monk skill, it would probably be one ill punch. Foresight is definitely one for tanks that I would probably get rid of. Healers, I don't know, just their tier one, like nukes, I guess like stone one and malefic one, like they're MP conscious and they have some utility in that of like a slow, but I don't know. So I, I'd want those kind of things condensed. So I, it's not really a whole lot of answers there, but those are some answers. Um, throwing knives can go die to fire. <laughs> some skills just need buffs, man. <laughs> that's uh, that's that's one thing that I'm looking at. So uh, yeah, I guess just those are some a few skills that I would be looking at for uh, for removal or change in the expansion. All right, next question. Good morning, Mr. Happy, and a happy Thanksgiving to you, sir. Hopefully you had a happy turkey day as well, my man. Uh, two non-14 questions uh, this time. Been taking a break from Aeorzea and myself for Pokemon. We, I just finished the Pokedex. I finished all 300 in the Pokedex. Even caught two Shinies. Uh, we caught a Shiny Caterpie and a Shiny Pipipec. So, uh, yeah, we uh, now we got to do the Shiny Living decks. Totally not going to happen ever and ever. Um, first question, I know you're playing Pokemon as well. I have to say is I love Ghost Pokemon. What's your favorite type? I don't have a favorite type. Dra I used to be a super traditional kid where it was like always oh, dragons, dragons, dragons. Not to, and to be honest, a lot of the dragon types in this game are kind of cool. So, uh, yeah, I guess I'll just, if I have to pick one, I'll stick with dragons. Just, I, I know that fairy types are, like, fucking OP as shit, but I'm going to stick with uh, dragon types. And uh, second question, I am a huger gamer. 
or, or a huge gamer. And I used to think like board games are not my cup of tea, but lately I found many modern board games to be very fun. Do you play any board games? I haven't played board games in a long time. I was kind of so the, my least favorite board game of all time is the game of life. It's the single biggest cheating board game I've ever played. Like everyone who every time I've ever played the game of life, people fucking cheat. Oh, I uh, I went to college and I pulled uh, this card. No, no, I don't want to be that. I went to college. I'm gonna pick my own career. And I'm just like, what the fuck are you doing? That's not how you play the game. And then just like, oh, it's cool. It's whatever. It's just whatever. Everyone can do it. I don't care. Why the fuck am I playing this game if we're just gonna cheat the whole goddamn time? I hate all of you. So I definitely hate the game of life. I don't trust anybody in the game of life. You're all horrible people when you play the game of life. Stop trying to cheat life. It's not like that. Um. It's also not, that's not how that game of life is. Um, I'm more of a Monopoly kind of guy. People still kind of cheat in Monopoly too, but it's not nearly as bad. The only problem with Monopoly is everybody has like house rules and then Monopoly rules. Sorry, I hit the microphone. And it seems like everybody grew up playing with different rules for Monopoly. And so when you get into a game, everyone's like, everyone knows how to play, right? Yeah. And then somebody tries to play like a house rule, like, oh, whenever you pass go, you can roll to see if you get an extra 200. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? You can't just, you can't just roll to get another 400. And then you have people who play without the whole triple, tri uh, if you get three duplicates in a row that you get sent to jail. Some people do like a jackpot, like if you land on free parking, every time you pass go, you add like $100 to the pot, and when you land on free parking, then somebody gets it, somebody gets whatever's in the pot. Like there's all those rules. It feels like everybody just has their own house rules, and everyone fights if you don't agree ahead of time to what the house rules are going to be for Monopoly. So I'll stick to Cards Against Humanity. Barely a board game, but that thing is fucking hilarious. Um, and that was the second question. Yes, it was. By the way, hashtag Red Mage Tank. Sad face. Yeah, those are just a few scenarios that I could come up with when it comes to board games. All right, next question. Good morning. Good morning to you, too. Just recently started getting into your videos regularly, so excuse me if this has been talked about, but this is something I ponder often. I mained Monk in A Realm Reborn all the way through Final Coil. Then when Dark Knight was announced, I fell in love with the aesthetic and fast playstyle of the job for Hammondsword. However, I miss being a DPS and the regroup I want to go to Stormblood doesn't need another tank. Think there's any chance we'll get something like a DPS spec for Dark Knight? No. <laughs> Sorry to break it to you. No, I think we're going to stick with the whole every job fills one role thing. Uh, it doesn't seem to be an idea that they are keen towards leaning away from. So, no, I don't see it going that way. Um, and he he kind of, Yoshi's kind of talked about it before. Where he's like, maybe we could do a different spec for this. But it's always been a, like what we could do or what is possible and not what we will do. So, no, I don't see that happening anytime soon. P -p no, it's, just, it's not. I just don't think it's going to happen. All right, next question. Hap, your answer last week disappointed me. We'll have a edit. This question is just too funny. So not even a roulette this time. All right, you're just going to give me one. Um, I'm going to read it because it says King versus Crisis, so I just want to make sure it's, it's 15 related. It's, it's appropriate. Um, oh, okay, yeah, this is a nice, easy one. Okay, I might know your answer on that one, but what are you looking forward to play more? Final Fantasy 15 or 7 Remake? Definitely 15. I'm not a big Final Fantasy 7 fan as is. Like, It's not a game that I feel like defined Final Fantasy for me. Um, and I'm not someone who even wanted it remade. I was like, this game is fine the way it is. It's not the greatest Final Fantasy of all time for me, but it's it's a good game, and I don't really feel the need to have it remade. Because um, I knew when they remade it, they weren't going to keep the combat system or anything. And also, if you're going to do the exact same game with more graphics, that's why bother? Like, that's just, to me, that's like a waste of remaking a game, is to just improve the graphics and make it the exact same game. What was, what did you need? It's the same game. Like, just because it's got fancier graphics, I'm going to spend another fucking $40 on it? No! I'm going to fucking play, if I haven't played a Final Fantasy game in 10 years, maybe I could understand doing that. But if I fucking played Final Fantasy VII last year, and then the remake comes out and it's the same thing, it's like, I'm not going to be interested in the remake, I'll play it but I'm not gonna be that interested in it. So I'm happy that it's not just the same game with better graphics, but I'm definitely more excited for Final Fantasy 15. I remember when they first revealed Final Fantasy 13, Final Fantasy Versus 13, and I was like, every, every day I would, I would log in, I would check the usual news websites. Oh, is anything on Final Fantasy Versus 13? Anything now, anything now? Did that for years and years and years and years and years until finally it was re-announced Final Fantasy 15, and now it is less than two days away, and I wanna fucking play it. So Final Fantasy 15 is my answer. Alright, next question. A-haps. 
I have that problem that I currently don't have fun in Final Fantasy XIV. I want to explore the game with some people. They are kind of on the same page. New player at level 60. I'm in a free company, and all the guys and girls are really nice, but they all have so much more experience than me in the game. Also, they play on PS4, and I play on PC. I don't know why that's a point. What I mean is, they have done all the current content, and I have not. I just looked into the forum and found a few free companies, and they are looking for the same journey as me. Um, should I stay in my current free company and wait for 4.0? Should I use the Party Finder to look for a Link shell? Or should I try out other free companies? So basically, it just sounds like your free companies beat everything, and they don't want to play with you because they're just kind of in, like, wait for the next patch mode. And that's a hard thing. If you're a new 60, you need people around that are interested in, like, like playing the game consistently uh because if people are just like no i don't want to do expert i don't need to i don't need the tombstones or like you know i don't want to oh i don't want to do aquapolis i don't need the money or i don't like it or you know oh, i don't want to do palace of the dead i don't need the weapon if you just deal with that over and over again it's really easy to get kind of brought down by their attitude so i'd say that definitely staying in the current free company waiting for 4.0 is an option only if you find a link shell of people you can play with or you need a new free company. If you can't find a link shell that acts, that does what you want to do, I say you need a new free company. I don't think that's a poor choice to make. I think you just need like, this is like when, you, even when you're looking for a static, you need to find people to play with that are like-minded. Otherwise you're basic, it's basically like you're punching a rock over and over again. And I don't mean Dwayne. So you, uh, yeah, you're probably better off finding either a new free company or staying in a free company and finding a link shell. But definitely you need a change of environment of so, to some degree. All right, next question. A good Sunday to you, Mr. Happy. A good Sunday to you, too. A couple of questions. I try to keep them short. As a fellow machine, I'm curious, what's your current item level and best in slot 270 gear you got already? I'm missing the body. What am I missing? The weapon, the body, the belt, the earrings, and the wrists. Those are the five pieces I'm missing for best in slot. Um, I should have them soon, but... Mm, it depends. Because with Final Fantasy 15 coming out, I'm going to probably miss a page for clearing for a week. So that's going to push it back. It doesn't even matter. All the shit's going to get replaced when the expansion comes out. <laughs> like, it'll be it'll be great for the first, like, level or two. Uh, I guess it'll we'll probably won't replace this gear until we're probably, like, maybe six or seven levels into the expansion. But it's not like it's going to... It's going to be more like we don't want to replace it because the difference in power is so little. Like, I'm not going to actively pursue getting armor from, like, a level 65 dungeon, for example. Um, but it'll probably get replaced before that at some point. It's just that quest rewards won't start to replace it for quite some time. Um, and uh, what's, my current item level is two, I think, 66 or something like that. And two, do you already know which job you'll use to play the 4.0 story? I'll, I'm going to use probably Machinist because it's probably the job I'm going to end up needing to play at level 70. If I'm not given the option to play Monk or Red Mage or whatever. I don't know. I want to play a DPS still. But I really want to play Monk. But it, right now in my static, it's not an option. And if it remains not an option, but Red Mage becomes an option, you know, I may make a switch. But that's going to be up to seeing what uh, what I can do with my raid group. Um, I know you don't like speculation questions, so you can skip the next one if you don't want to. Um, yeah, we've I've gotten a lot of these job fusion questions, or what do you think of them? Um, what's it called? Yeah, so um, a dancer will be implemented into Monk. See, that's the thing. They're not going to do that. They're not going to just make Monk into a dancer type job. They're going to keep Monk the like the way it is. It's core now. It's gameplay style now. They're not just going to work dancer skills into Monk. You know, that doesn't make any sense. There's what there's taking ideas from jobs and, you know, infusing them into other jobs. And then there's just straight up doesn't make sense for what this job is actually supposed to do or what this job is supposed to be. So this isn't even a matter of is the girl a monk or a dancer. This is just this is one of those scenarios that, in my opinion, just makes no sense to do. All right, we got a few more questions on the forums. I think like three or four more, and then we'll get to some Twitch questions. Howdy, Haps. First time poster, but long time viewer. Thanks for all the content you make. Keep up the great work. Thank you for watching it. For my offering, please accept this plate of leftover turkey for all the wonderful leftover turkey sandwiches. The best sandwiches. I did ham. I'm not a bit. I don't like turkey all that much. Um, even if, you know, you, you know, you do the whole thing, you know, you wrap it in bacon, you put the stuffing in, you cook it just right so it doesn't get dry. To me, it's just not as good tasting of a meat as, like, I would rather have a ham or chicken or probably any other poultry or beef or anything other than turkey over that. So I did, we did ham for, for Thanksgiving, and to be honest, I'm happier that way. Honey, honey glaze, oh, just honey glazed ham. It's beautiful honey glazed ham. And ham sandwiches are also fantastic. Just had a quick question. I mean White Mage, but have been uh, having a fun time with Astro. I have both classes at 60, but can't help feel that despite the recent changes made to Astrologian, Nocturnal Sex... No, Nocturnal is incredibly powerful now. So here's the thing. Nocturnal is probably the single 
highest healing output job in the game. Between healing and mitigation, both their effective healing is probably the highest of all of the four possible healers. If you're going to include Astro um, as Diurnal and Nocturnal as two separate kinds of healers. The thing is, is that they don't multitask as well as like Scholar, for example. A Scholar is still that, you know, beast that's capable of way more DPS output than the Astro is. And they can produce shields while they may not be as strong. They're more than enough. And that's an important thing to remember. A Scholar's shields are more than enough, which means that the extra efficiency of the Nocturnal shields in some cases is lost. It has its benefits from time to time, but it's almost like when people say, you know, oh, Mantra's great to have for the extra healing, but I can do all these fights without that Mantra. So do I need the Mantra? Is it nice to have? Yes. Is it needed? No. So I will say that Nocturnal Astro is incredibly powerful right now. It's just that Scholar's multitasking and the fact that it, it does the needed amount of healing and mitigation while outputting more damage basically brings it down to Astro's card pulling as its biggest benefit. And you can get that as Diurnal or Nocturnal. So that's not something that you need to be picky about. That's really where the differences come in. So Diurnal, I like the playstyle of Diurnal more. I'm more of a regen type healer. I always like healing over time way more. But I can't ignore that Nocturnal is literally god tier. So um, there's a reason why the first A12 Savage solo was done with a Nocturnal Astro and there was only one death. That's because the fool used Blood for Blood. So that's all I gotta say. Uh, are there any situations in four-man content where the Nocturnal Astro would be preferred? So what I like to do in four-man content for like dungeons is I'll, between pulls, I'll switch to Nocturnal, throw a dope-ass shield on the tank, and then switch back to Diurnal because it's my preferred play style. But you can do a dungeon super easy with Nocturnal. To, for me, I just don't feel as comfortable doing DPS while healing as a nocturnal astro and four-man dungeon especially with those big ass pulls so uh that's just that's just the way i prefer to play it um if somebody wants to chime in on that feel free all right next question hey haps how's it going keep up the great work thank you question as a new player in 14 what do you think the things are that you notice that beginners in the game have the most difficulty playing their job i mean it's the truth it's a lot of information to take in and it's because there's no as we call it the intermediate hall there's none of that that doesn't exist um it's it's not always a given like black mage is probably the job i see people screw up on the most as soon as they get fire three and blizzard three um the game doesn't do a great job of kind of teaching you how those how those abilities intertwine with your normal ability usage so i i just say that learning how to play their job is like the thing i see the newest players have the hardest time with whether it's because they don't want to read their skills or they don't want to change something like oh i do this every fight i got this new skill Okay, well, I already do this every fight, so I don't need this new skill. But this new skill is like one of the most important new skills you're going to get. Yeah, but I already do this other thing, so I don't need that skill. It's like, yes, you do need that skill. It's like, don't tell me to play my game. I pay my, I pay my sub. And it's like, <sighs> tell me, do you think what you're doing is good? Yeah. Okay. It's not. <laughs> That's definitely going to be the way that I, uh, I respond to it. So... It's definitely learning to play their job properly. Some of them get to it eventually, but that's usually like a max level thing. It's all about learning as you go, and I don't feel like the game gives you the right tools to do that, but I also feel like there's a very low amount of effort that new players put into understanding how their abilities work as they're leveling up. All right, second to last question here on the forums. Hey, hey, Haps. Hey, hey. A uh, long time viewer, but first time posting on the forum, so have a biscuit. I had a biscuit the other day. It was pretty good. I've got a Stormblood trailer question. I've been playing through the story again on an ult, and something came to my mind that didn't before. The woman in the Stormblood trailer has blonde hair, blue eyes, but no markings on her neck like Ida does. So couldn't the woman be Minfilia? No. If you haven't been... So you said, have you... Something came to mind. So have you done the story? I'm just going to ask that because we already know what's going on with her. She's a completely different person with different facial structure, with different, uh, she's got different features. We'll put it that way. She's not Minfilia. Um, and it, keep in mind, we, we've already described this. The whole tattoo thing, we can't take too seriously because they omit things like tattoos in art and animation very frequently. So it's no surprise that she doesn't have it, whether or not it's Ida. And everyone's like, oh, Ida in the new 3.5 thing has no tattoo on her neck so it must be her now right and it's like no sometimes they just don't do shit when it comes to when it comes to drawing and animation it just doesn't happen um so no it's not it's not minfilia <laughs> that's all i'll say all right and the final question here over on the forums is hello mr happy this is final sim and welcome to my question on your channel what mount do you like best that's a tough one because, like, I earned my Fenrir mount, I, I got the 1 million MGP, so I have kind of, like, a bias towards it because of the effort that went in. 
I'm not a big fan of the Black Pegasus that came from Palace of the Dead, and I have that. Um, I don't know, man. There's a lot of mounts I don't like, but I guess the most visually hilarious one to watch is always going to be the Turtle for me, the, the uh, Adamantois mount that you get for 200,000 MGP. I also bought that one recently. It's just, it just stands out so much more as a mount compared to all of the other mounts. So, uh, if I had to pick a favorite, I would probably go with the Adamant Toys from, uh, from the Gold Saucer. And that's the last question over on the Dream Network forum. So, now what I do is I look through the Twitch chat and I find the good questions and I ignore the shitty ones. So, if you have a good question, post it in the chat. If you have a shitty one, don't. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to catch some questions there. And I'm going to make the new thread for Mondays with Mr. Happy now. So, let's do that. All right, so the first question we have from the Twitch chat, uh, Mr. Happy, as a content creator who makes a living making videos via YouTube and broadcasting on Twitch, how do you deal with memory issues for your computer? My computer just doesn't have memory issues. I don't know what it is. Well, one thing is I have, I have 16 gigabytes in this thing now. I don't even have 32. I only have 16. And I don't have any memory issues. Like, I don't know. I feel like my computer, it's not like the best computer in the world, but I feel like all the technical issues that so many other people deal with just don't happen on this computer i don't know what it is i see people on twitter all the time i have this issue that issue this issue mel's computer sometimes has this issue that issue and i'm just like what the hell how do i never have any like i could understand if i don't have all the issues but i never have any of those issues i don't know what is so good about my computer that i don't have memory issues i don't have it doesn't crash the only issue i have is that when i'm playing final fantasy 14 my mouse disconnects randomly it doesn't matter what mouse it is it could be the cheap 20 dollar one from friggin walmart it could be a steel series mouse it could be a razor mouse it doesn't matter every mouse i have only does this disconnecting thing when i'm playing final fantasy 14 it doesn't matter which usb slot it is either 2.0 or 3.0 i have no idea what i do but it's uh that's that's you know i i don't have memory issues in my computer i just i it's built well enough to the point where i don't have that problem but it could definitely use some upgrading all right the next question i have uh is what feature of final fantasy 15 are you most excited about hmm you know it seems really silly it's like one of, it's not like a major gameplay aspect or anything prompto taking pictures has quickly become one of my favorite aspects about that game for two reasons one it's really cool at the end of a like at the end of a day when you you rest up you get your experience points whatever to see all these pictures that he's taken like it's a great reminder of what you just spent all your time doing and i love that it's a feature i didn't think i would fall in love with but i did almost immediately the first time he showed me the pictures the second thing is he makes my YouTube thumbnails for me. Like, the dude is doing my job, and I love that about him. So thank you, Prompto. Keep doing my job. All right, next question I have is English voiceovers versus Japanese voiceovers. Which do you prefer? Now, I'm assuming that's about Final Fantasy XV, even though I haven't really heard much of both of them. Uh, I've heard very limited, like, Episode to Sky worth of English plus the trailers, and then Japanese, like, Judgment Disc, and a few other things. Um... But I'm I'm way I I'm always English voice actors, dude. I don't wanna I don't wanna be spending like an RPG is a long game. The last thing I want to do is be reading for the entire game because I can't understand what they're saying. I can never look away and just listen to what they're saying. I gotta sit there and read every word that comes out of their mouth for the next forty hours. I am not doing that. So I always take the English voiceovers, and I don't mind if they're a little cringy, because the Japanese voiceovers don't sound any better to me. <laughs> they just, there's just a different language. They're like exotic. You know, they're exotic, so it's like, ooh, they're exotic. And also, I gotta admit, sometimes some Japanese voice actors, they, they, they kill it. They, they, they're pretty sweet with the, like, getting their emotions out properly. But it doesn't sound any better to me, because I don't know what the fuck they're saying. <laughs> So I can't get excited about it. So always go with English voiceovers for me. All right, we have an interesting one here because I'm going to have to really think about this. Mr. Happy, you seem to have a completionist mindset to a lot of games. What's the first game you 100%ed? Whew, that's a tough one, man. I'm probably going to be wrong because there's no way I'm going to remember which game I got 100% on. You know, I remember getting all 151 in Pokemon Red. I lived in New Jersey. Rockefeller Center, where the actual Pokemon Center is, is not far. I had a friend that used to go to New York City very very uh, frequently, and he'd come back with, like, Pokemon from the Pokemon Center. Like, he came back with a Mew. He came back with a Celebi. So I, I got, like, legendary Pokemon from him all the time. So that's how I got to 151 in, in Pokemon Red. That might be the first one. 
that I ever actually did. But then I think back to games like Jet Force Gemini. I know I 100%ed Jet Force Gemini. You know, I know I 100%ed Bomberman 64. I can't, this is imp it's so hard for me to know which one was the first one that I did. 120 stars in Mario 64? No, man, you gotta get those hidden stars, you know, the secret ones that everybody bullshits about on the internet because nobody knows any better at this point. Um, yeah, man, that's, that's tough, dude. It's gotta be either like Mario 64 or Bomberman 64 or Pokemon Red or Jet Force Gemini. or It's one of those four games if I had to pick one. Like, it's got to be one of those four. So, I don't know, because I don't think I ever 100%ed many Nintendo or Super Nintendo games. A lot of those games, like, I just barely, <laughs> they were fucking hard, so I just tried to beat them. 100%ing them was not on my mind. But for the other ones, yeah, I'm definitely going to go with those. I mean, Ocarina of Time could be another one as well. But I'm going to say it's either Super Mario 64 or Bomberman 64. Those are the two that are at, like, the top of my list. I didn't play Super Mario RPG, and I didn't 100% Super Mario RPG until I was way older. So that's definitely not one that I 100%ed. All right, next question coming in here. Where do you see the future of streaming and pre-made content creation going? Do you think it'll taper off eventually and the barrier for entry becoming more difficult to break? Well, first of all, the barrier for entry is already tougher to break through. A lot of people just have a warped sense of how to get into content creation and broadcasting. It seems like the general mentality is I need to find a bigger person to tell people about me. People aren't focusing on doing quality content. They're not focused on consistent content. They're focused on getting the most exposure possible. And you know what? Realistically, with how hard it is to break in, not a horrible thing. It's just not very authentic. And people on the internet look for authentic. You know, they look for entertaining, they look for authentic, you know, or they look for something to hate with all of their passion. One of those three things. You don't want to be the third, unless you do, because it gets you views, for all I know. Um, so people focus more on that than actually developing content creation. So the barrier is already way higher. People just want to jump in and get noticed immediately. They don't want to have to wait six months, a year, two years. They don't want to put in the time, man. They just want to jump straight to the top. And that is unfortunately not going to really get you anywhere. If you're not creating quality content, you're not doing things. What I, my number one thing is when a game that I was really hyped for started coming out, I started making videos way before. Like there was almost no information about it yet. So you know what? You take the information that's there and you put it in video format. And you become very much of more of an informant, like a reporter in a sense, for a certain game. And that helps build a specific community. And while you're building that community, you don't do what I did. Don't just stick to only that. Build into other things that you're excited for in the future. Don't wait for something to happen. Build into it. You know, be proactive about it. Get people excited for something before they even know they want to be excited for it. And then as it gets closer and closer to launch, you've already got videos out. People are scrambling to make videos about news as the game gets closer and closer. You've already got them. You've already built that. So it builds up your ability to uh, develop content that people will actually listen to or that people will actually find because it was there first. So uh, those are probably the big things. As for the future of it, um, after I just not considering barrier for entry, there is no way of knowing what this career will be. It's one of the scariest careers in, in like the world because <laughs> you have no idea where it'll be in six months. You have no idea where it'll be in a year. You don't know if you'll even be popular in six months or a year. Broadcasters have to think about that every day. How do I prevent people from losing interest in my content and my broadcast? And you know what? The answer is usually to, you know, mix things up a little bit occasionally, but also still do what you're good at. And it's, sometimes it's really scary to do either or because if you stick to one thing you're good at, then you don't branch out. If you branch out, then people might walk away because it's not what they originally got into you for in the first place. There's just so many different elements that you need to consider. And on top of that, you don't even know if Twitch will be around in a year, two years, three years, four years, five years. You don't know. That's your career. You have no idea if it will even be there in five years. Think about that. Your industry, that's like shit that you like, we think about like the old days where like they had factory workers and now machines do everything. Imagine those people finding out that machines are coming out and like they have to worry if their factory is going to, is going to get replaced them with machines. Like it's kind of like the same mentality, but it's just like, what do you do? If Twitch goes away, what's the next step? Well, do you have a few choices? Do you, or the game that you got popular for goes away. That's another way. That's another thing to do. What do you do? What's the next step? Do you go to the next hottest platform? That's usually the easiest. That's not the easiest, but that's usually the first step 
in what you have to consider. Um, do you look for other avenues of revenue? Do you work uh, more directly with companies? Do you try to get a job in the industry and transition with, hey, I have these community skills because I ran this for all these years. It's a lot of things to consider. And there are things that most of us who got into this industry were not, I guess, mentally prepared to think about. A lot of us aren't business savvy. A lot of us didn't go to school and get a business degree. A lot of us never ran something that we like could call our own. We're used to having other people tell us what to do and what's right and what's wrong and not having to think for ourselves and just being a cog in, in the in the machine, you know? So it's, uh, it's people, you have to think about it ahead of time. And even if you don't know, if you don't have your answer, as long as you're thinking about it and you're you know, mentally prepared for it. When the time comes, you'll be able to make the correct decisions about that thing. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's tough. There's a lot of elements that go into it. And I think the future of it is very, it's not bleak, but it's very much shrouded in fog because nobody knows where it's going to be in a few years. So it's, it's interesting. That's why I'm, I'm happy to have had things like Twitch prime, like cheers, because you know what? They don't solve the problem in the long term. They don't make it so that oh, Twitch will automatically be around in five years, 10 years, whatever. But they do help supplement lifestyles and they help allow you to prepare for your future financially a little bit easier because there are other, there are other um, revenue streams. And uh, they've made a huge impact on my life. And uh, I'd like to believe they made a huge impact on other broadcasters' lives over here on Twitch. So it's definitely something that has to be considered. So think of all of those things and that's the future of this industry. In other words, nobody has a fucking clue. All right, I think I'm gonna make this the last question that I take and it's a very, very simple question right here. Um, in hindsight, if you knew this tier for the world first race would be over in two days, would you have tried to compete or done, uh, or are you done? I like to be done with world first races. The only way I would race world first ever again is if I could stream the whole thing. It's, it's the only way. And in that case, you're not even like, you're barely even considered a participant in the race. If you are confident enough in your ability to get world first to the point where you will stream your progress and your strategies to other people who could use them as a resource because then when it comes to the race, people use the resources that are available to them. You better be sure you are damn well that much better than everyone else in the race. And I am never gonna be confident of that, that I am that much ahead of anybody in the race. Because half the time, like I look at like Rin and I'm like, yeah, I, I don't machinist like that guy. <laughs> I'm not like a machinist master. I can't, I'm not at the upper echelon of the job that I've been playing this tier. I can't have that confidence level that I could clear the raid tier so fast that I could stream it. I would love to stream just world prog whatever you want to call it server prog whatever just brand new patch prog all the way through two things i've noticed though one streaming raid is fucking boring as a broadcaster who does this for a living you might get people that'll watch the stream but the amount of it does it does like almost nothing in terms of community building unless you build everything around it. A good example of that is Zeno. He does tons of like alt alt raids and trap raids. Like he's always raiding. The guy's never doing anything but raiding if he's in Final Fantasy 14. For that reason, it works. I don't do that. I do my raid on my one character and then I'm done. Which doesn't which means that by raiding, by streaming that raid, I'm not doing any community building. I'm just providing video footage of new content. And for me, I haven't seen that be wildly successful on my Twitch channel. I haven't seen it be wildly successful on the YouTube channel either. I see doing things where I'm highly interactive, showing new content, but being highly interactive with my broadcast. That is what's effective. That does community building. So I, uh, I, I don't say I wouldn't participate in the world race, but if I can't stream it, I'm not doing it. And if I'm streaming it, we're not winning, most likely. So it's kind of like a, a an if it's kind of like a, a back and forth question a forward and back question if you will um and i don't think there's really a right answer to it but i would i would never compromise more than a day or two for the world progress like if we find out if everyone goes oh the next raid tier will probably be two days and then it takes two weeks i'm fucked like i'm totally fucked because i've already dedicated myself to that resource so kind of it's just not a very it's not a very reliable thing i can't expect every single raid tier will be a two-day raid tier so i can't say that i want to do the world race every single time that's that's the best that's the best way i could think to put it that's that's just the best way i could think to put it um so anyway that's going to be the last question that i take for uh for this week's mondays with mr happy uh, anyway, uh, so anyway, videos at the bottom again, there's not really that many from this last week. I've been like producing almost no content on YouTube because I'm just like getting myself mentally prepared for Final Fantasy 15. 
so hopefully that ends up uh, that ends up going the way that I hope it will. I'm like I'm pretty nervous about how the Final Fantasy 15 stream is gonna go. I'm just hoping everything turns out okay. We raise some money for charity. Some new people sub. We, it's a good stream. It's a positive environment. I like the game. It's in 10 years, man. I know the game hasn't been in development for 10 years, but it's been 10 years in the making of me getting to this moment, and I just want it to go well. All right, so that's what I'm thinking about, and that's what... I'm going to be spoiler-free YouTube videos, by the way, um, for anyone uh, curious about that. No, um, no spoilers in the titles, I mean, for the YouTube videos for Final Fantasy XV, so keep that in mind. Anyway, guys, I'm going to get going. I got some stuff that I got to do. Uh, I'm going to wrap up both the YouTube video and the Twitch video right now. So thank you for the subs that happened while I was doing this. Uh, I think I saw a couple of cheers and a few follows in there as well. But I got to get some chores. So unlike my normal ending where I say goodbye to YouTube and I say I'll hang out with Twitch a few more minutes, I'm going to get going on both platforms right now. Uh, something you guys don't usually see me do over on, you know, this is something I usually do after I'm done, is I throw a host over to somebody where all the viewers can go and they can hang out for however much longer they want to uh, hang out for. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to throw that on to, let's see, who am I going to throw that on to? I'm going to throw that on to, I don't know how much longer Ren Chan is streaming for, but uh, he's the machinist that I was just talking about in the video. So he's just standing there. I don't know if he's doing anything, but you know what? I'm just going to throw him a host. Whatever. Thank you, everyone, for coming by. I will see you tomorrow for Count of Cast and then for the huge Final Fantasy 15 stream. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Until then, take care.